Well, here we are, right on the very verge, the edge of Christmas. My goodness. It, I, it doesn't seem possible because this is the fourth Sunday of Advent, and we're supposed to have a week after the fourth Sunday of Advent, and, but it just doesn't turn out that way all the time. The, um, to take you down a little bit of uh, memory lane, do you remember some of the most frightening words that you ever heard on Christmas Day? You don't? Oh, it, batteries not included. <laughs> batteries not included. I, I've noticed that more and more now, batteries are included. I think there must have been some kind of a revolt or something or other, but the, uh, or people wouldn't buy, buy the toy if it didn't have batteries in it. The uh, batteries not included. And the other one, I'm sure I've given you a hint with this, the other, now this wasn't Christmas Day, this was always Christmas Eve, that this was something that struck terror into the hearts of people. Good people, kind people, faithful, loving, generous people. And it was some assembly required, yes. Some assembly required, you know. Because you, do you have a crescent wrench anywhere? The, uh, and that was before Ikea, you know. <laughs> Before Ikea, you know, because then they actually still had instructions that were written down, you know. Now you just have a pictogram. You're going, is this the skinny part of L? Anyway, why am I sharing this with you? I don't know. It was just to have you think about, you know, some of the things that used to tie us up in little knots unexpectedly and doesn't seem to happen anymore now. But then we have, I guess, other, other things that happen. You remember when you first saw a product advertised and it said, if one bulb goes out, the rest stay lit. <laughs> what a joy that brought to Christmas, you know? I mean, because before you'd be changing and trying and... Do you remember tinsel? All right, you remember, remember we used to reuse it? Remember how interesting it was to have that ball of tinsel? because you weren't really interested in putting, taking it off the tree in any really organized manner. You just got it in the box and closed it up. And then it was done. You didn't have to think about anything again until you got the box out of the attic or the closet and you opened it up and saw this big ball of lead. Oh, they used to make it out of lead. Did you know that? They got rid of lead because it was too dangerous. And then they began to make it out of plastic. That was a big, big improvement. So, I don't know what you're fearful of, but let me read this little poem. I mean, from Christmas's past, I don't know what you're fearful of, perhaps with this Christmas coming. But here's this. This is about Joseph. This is about how Christmas came to be at the very first Christmas. And they didn't have worries about assembly required or worries about light bulbs staying lit or um, batteries being concluded. It said this, and this is uh, from a book, A Woman Wrapped in Silence, and it's a, a long book-length poem by Monsignor Lynch, and it says this, of Joseph then, oh, did he rise and stealthily return before the cave's wide entrance, there to stare within the dark and lift his eyes to search the trembling stars and did he feel the midnight's slow, sweet advent and the pulse of joy that ached beneath the hours as sharp as pain? And did he mark again the barrenness and with a craftsman's hand run sadly down a length of broken beam? And suddenly did Joseph fall upon his knees and know our purest human helplessness, and hold his heart the center of a tide of sobs that deepened silently, lest she might hear who did not need to hear. And were there prayers, uncertainties? What happened here until a cry came that had not been heard before? The beat of pulses and the hush of heart had made a silence more intent within surrounding silence. Deepening of night, the last pure poise of prayer, more still and wordless 
in an utter distillate of prayer, starlight moving imperceptibly, the drift of time, and then a moment's fall, the last that we would know of loneliness, a sigh unheard within the dark, and then she wrapped him up in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. I always read this little passage from this beautiful little book um, dedicated to Mary. I always read this just before Christmas because I, I don't know exactly what trials afflict our individual families at this time of year or throughout the whole year. You know, to think about the general tension of trying to get things ready for Christmas and then suddenly find that <laughs> there's something missing in the box that you needed. Yeah, but it was a different time when so long ago that some people probably don't even remember that one point you could be really frightened by the words batteries not included. But those were never the important parts of our lives. They were just the dressing to the important part of our life. Because what it was is that the people that were regretting that they didn't have any batteries were loving parents who had probably stood in line for a long time to get that special gift and then realized that no one told them the batteries weren't included in it or trying to assemble something at, or at, the, at the very last minute because nothing was put up until the night before. Some people may not remember that. Nothing was put up until the night before. And in fact, that you had to be asleep before it could be put up, which I think is why lots of parents were the last people to get out of bed on Christmas morning. <laughs> the, um, though all of those are just the dressing, just the incidental worries and problems and troubles and things. In the first reading, we talk about the no longer need for repeated sacrifices because God was going to send his son who would take upon himself our need to sacrifice and would thereby be, would complete and would take over the need for constant offerings because God had already made that offering, which was once and for all, the sacrifice of his son. And so here you have Joseph, you know, away from medical care, in a, a place where a uh, stable or a cave where, where animals were lodged, and his betrothed is getting ready to have a child, her first, and he's trying not to let her know how helpless he feels and not to let her hear his cries, his sobs that he holds deep within his heart so that she won't hear him. It's like he has stepped partially out of the cave in order to not make her any more afraid than she was. And when he gets to the point where he just can't even find the words to pray, but his heart and his fear and his love for Mary is such that it becomes an utter dis distillate poise of prayer, more deeper than words could ever say. Well, I, I know on the, this edge of Christmas, this is what it means to be human. A man, a woman, a child, you know? We all experience life, and it's an ongoing experience, isn't it? And so much so that you know, we have to continually be reminded, I think, of the astounding miracle of God becoming a human being. We have to remember that, that the miracle of God becoming a human being, which meant then that he would know our lives just as we know them, that he would understand our hearts, you know, better than we could understand our own that he would know from being in this earthen vessel that we all share, he would know our, how complicated we are, he would know how prone to mistakes we are, and he would know 
how much we needed love. And I don't think that God could really have come up with that on his own unless he had actually been part of a family and had seen, you know, the dynamics that happen in just part of the day-to-day -day life. But it did happen that God became a human being and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So, whatever possible frictions you might have between now and Christmas, whatever things are going to surprise you when you go, oh, wrong size. <laughs> the uh, one time, one of the first Christmases, my first, the firstborn nephew was at, my father had this box. He goes, here, Pop Pop, this is for you. My father looked at it, shook it, and said, I wonder what this could be. And just then John said, shoes, Pop Pop, it's shoes. <laughs> so hang in there. But also do more than just hang in there. You know, take time to, to realize what a wonderful gift God gave to us in, in sending his only begotten son, who we could understand from the beginning because it was a child. A child is born to us, a son is given to us. And when it says, and upon his shoulders dominion rests, that, that really means that with all the things that are impossible to manage in our family life, the very fact that God has become part of our families takes us the rest of the way.